Hi, I'm Jim Sproniotopoulos, and today we're talking about ring-enhancing lesions, and this is the 101 class. We have no significant conflicts of interest or financial disclosures. There are many different patterns of contrast morphology. We can have homogeneous enhancement, heterogeneous enhancement, and superficial or serpentine enhancement. We can also have ring lesions. They may be unilocular or multilocular. They can be smooth and thin, thick and irregular. There can be an incomplete ring or rim of enhancement. And we can also have a cyst with a mural module. Ring enhancing lesions are a very common differential diagnosis in neuroimaging. Here we see four different patterns of ring enhancing lesions. Many people use the mnemonic magic doctor or magical doctor to remind themselves of the many different kinds of ring enhancing lesions. Metastatic disease and multiple sclerosis, an abscess, glioblastoma multiforme, subacute infarcts, cerebritis and contusion, AVMs and vascular malformations, lymphoma, demyelinating disease including tumefactive demyelinating lesions, and radiation necrosis or resolving hematomas. So how do we sort out these many different kinds of lesions? A ring enhancing lesion has peripheral or marginal enhancement that surrounds a usually central non-enhancing region. There is oftentimes surrounding vasogenic edema and we can evaluate the rim of enhancement to see if it is thick or thin, smooth versus a shaggy inner margin, we can look at the extent of surrounding signal change, often called vasogenic edema, and we can evaluate the center for possible rediffusion. If we go back to these same four different types of ring enhancing lesions, we can see one of them is round and smooth, suggesting an abscess. One of them is very irregular and has a shaggy inner margin, suggesting a necrotic neoplasm. One of them shows an incomplete rim of enhancement. This is oftentimes seen in fluid secreting tumors which can also produce the cyst and mural nodule morphology when they occur in the posterior fossa or cerebellum. We oftentimes see surrounding vasogenic edema when we have abscesses and neoplasms of both types, the fluid secreting as well as the necrotic. But when we have tumefactive demyelination, one of the critical features is to identify an incomplete rim of enhancement. And that would be suggestive of an advancing zone of inflammation. So these four different types of lesions can be sorted out by looking at the characteristics of the center and the pattern of ring or rim enhancement. So abscesses are usually round and smooth with a thin rim, unilocular, surrounding vasogenic edema that's typically very extensive. The rim may be hypointense on T2, and there will be restricted diffusion on a diffusion-weighted image or AC map. Abscesses characteristically have a smooth inner margin because pathologically we're looking at the rim of granulation tissue surrounding the pus and the coagulation necrosis. The hypointensity of the rim is oftentimes described as being due to macrophages that have free radicals or atomic oxygen. And of course we look for the characteristic pattern of DWI bright hyperintensity due to the presence of restricted diffusion in the pus. So abscesses classically have restricted diffusion and a hypointense rim and they're typically convex all the way around. If we look at this pathologic example, we can see it has a very, very smooth margin. We can see the white cell mass and coagulation necrosis in the center. When we have a neoplasm, a necrotic neoplasm, which is typically very high grade, will have a thick and irregular wall, a very shaggy inner margin. And if you do delayed scanning, you can oftentimes see heterogeneous fill-in within the center of the necrotic rim. So these are the characteristics we look for in a necrotic neoplasm. Irregular, thick and variable wall, shaggy inner margin, complex shape, vasogenic edema, and the rim may or may not be hypointense on T2, and there typically is increased diffusion because of cell lysis and necrosis. Here is a classic glioblastoma multiforme in the thalamus with a very thick and shaggy margin of enhancement, and it has central necrosis. Necrosis is bad in a neoplasm, whereas fluid secreting tumors, fluid is good. If we look at a different case, we can see in this diffusion weighted image of a glioblastoma a partially thin rim and yet a lateral thick rim, but we have 
an increase in diffusion and not restricted diffusion, and that's very suggestive that we have necrosis and not pus in an abscess. So the diffusion here is not restricted. Necrosis is bad. If we compare an abscess of toxoplasmosis with a similar lesion that is a necrotic neoplasm or GBM, we can see how different the rims are. One is thin and smooth and one is thick and irregular. If we compare the diffusion weighted imaging side by side, we can see in the GBM we have a multilocular appearance, a complex pattern of rim enhancement, and we have increased diffusion from necrosis. If we look at the abscess, we have restricted diffusion from pus. And the primary cause of the restricted diffusion is viable cells, which are typically macrophages in an abscess. Now, in addition to a necrotic neoplasm, cystic neoplasms may also produce a ring-enhancing appearance or some pattern of peripheral rim enhancement. We can have a mural nodule. Part of the wall may not enhance, and this is the characteristic suggesting a fluid secreting process rather than a necrotic process. We may have a smooth inner margin. The fluid rarely enhances. We may see a fluid fluid level. Here's a classic example of a pilocytic astrocytoma on MR with gadolinium and CT with iodine. We can see a mural nodule and two non-enhancing fluid locules that are not rimmed nor surrounded by contrast enhancement. So if we look carefully, we do not see any enhancement forming the rim around the fluid-filled space. This is fluid and not necrosis. Fluid is good. Here is another example of a pilocytic astrocytoma. We can see the nodule. There's a small fluid collection within the nodule shown by the white arrow, but the most important and characteristic feature is that we have a rim surrounding the fluid that does not show any contrast enhancement. This is fluid secretion and not necrosis. Fluid is good. The last thing we want to discuss are tumefactive demyelinating lesions, which characteristically have the open ring sign or a partial rim of contrast enhancement, and classically they are not surrounded by vasogenic edema. The signal abnormality on flare or proton density weighted imaging ends at the edge of the contrast enhancement. So these are the characteristics we look for in tumefactive demyelination. The open or incomplete ring sign was described in 1996 and in 2000 and is very suggestive for demyelinating disease but may also be present in some fluid secreting or cystic neoplasms. So when we have tumefactive demyelination, we expect there to be relatively little mass effect for the size of a lesion. We may have an incomplete or open rim of enhancement. And the perilesional white matter signal abnormality usually is uh, limited or not present at all. Spreading vasogenic edema is uncommon in tumefactive demyelinating lesions. People have also suggested that you may see vessels passing through the lesion on susceptibility weighted imaging, which would not occur in any of the other entities that we have discussed. This last case of tumefactive demyelination shows that the edge of the signal abnormality ends at the edge of the enhancement, and the enhancement pattern is forming an incomplete or open ring sign. And again, these are very suggestive of tumefactive demyelination. So if we look very, very carefully and we see the incomplete ring sign, and especially if we see satellite white matter lesions, we're thinking about a demyelinating process. So when we examine ring enhancing lesions, we look for these characteristic patterns. Round and smooth for an abscess, shaggy inner margin, thick wall for a necrotic neoplasm, an incomplete or non-enhancing rim for a fluid secreting tumor, and a partial rim of enhancement can occur also in tumefactive demyelinating lesions. So abscess, neoplasm with necrosis, fluid secreting tumor, and tumefactive demyelination and other causes of demyelination can all have a characteristic pattern of enhancement. This is Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and I want to thank you for your kind attention, and I have approved this message.